morning, everyone. Let us prepare our hearts for worship this morning.
And as is tradition in, I would say, virtually all Christian traditions, we greet one another at the beginning of every time we gather with the passing of Christ's peace. So what I invite you to do, you know, we traditionally will do handshakes and hugs and things like that. But now in the time we're in, we're learning a lot more non-contact ways of sharing Christ's love with one another. So this morning, I'm going to invite you to share air kisses. How's that? Um, but no blowing, okay, because we don't want to blow any, um, what do you call it, aerosol particles on one another. So I invite you to share the love of Christ with one another as you say, the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. And you can add uh, some sort of a, an air kiss. Okay, so I wish you uh, well and I wish you Christ's peace. Turn to people, those sitting nearby you, and offer them Christ's peace as well. Peace be with you. This morning we have a few announcements, and one of which is next week. Actually, every week in the month of, month of May, we have things going on right here in our worship service here at Montebello Plymouth Congregational Church. And next week, May 17th, right after worship service at 11.15, the Sunday school, there will be a Sunday school event. It will be a virtual game day. There will be games and prizes for all ages. So it's not just for the Sunday school children. So check your email or contact Miss BJ at the office, the church office, or Mrs. Lonnie. Uh, you can give her a call at 626-667-4884. And that way you can get the Zoom meeting ID and password. And that's for next week, Sunday, for our Sunday School Virtual Game Day. Lots of fun for everyone. And then the following week after that, we will have our Memorial Sunday. That's on May 24th. And our MPCC members and friends are welcome to send in names and pictures of immediate family members who have passed away uh, sometime between uh, last May, uh, May 26th, and this May 17th. And uh, during the prayer time on Memorial Sunday, that's in two weeks, we will read your loved ones' names, and show their pictures as a part of our worship broadcast and invite everyone to remember your loved ones. So please send those pictures in uh, by next week, uh, May 17th. You can, it doesn't have to be before the service, but sometime by next week uh, so that uh, Miss BJ will have enough time to organize a slideshow. And then for the final Sunday of May, we have Pentecost Sunday. So what we're going to do is we're going to invite the whole congregation to send in short videos, five, no, no more than 15 seconds uh, of a video update and your wishes from your family to include uh, for that, that Pentecost Sunday worship broadcast. Uh, you can even take a, a, a short video from your, your, uh, from your phone if you like. And then uh, please send that to Miss BJ at uh, mpccucc at gmail.com. So what I want you to include in that video, I know you only have less than 15 seconds to do your video, but include, for one, what have you been doing in quarantine? And secondly, encouraging words for, for the congregation. So please don't exceed 15 seconds. And the deadline for the receipt of those family update videos is May 24th. Okay, so make sure you get those videos in. And also, we, we know that some people haven't been able to join us online because they don't have internet. So we want you to pass the word around that we have a, a Zoom that you can join, uh, at, or you're probably joining us on Facebook or on YouTube. But for your friends who don't have internet, please pass the word on that we want them to join us by Zoom, and it'll be audio only so they can hear the worship broadcast. So all they need to do is call 1-669-900-9128. And the meeting number each Sunday morning at 10 a.m., our meeting number will be 947-455-1111. Hashtag. 
and that will get you in with your, you can just use your telephone and you can hear the worship service live uh, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. So those are our announcements for today. We look forward to continuing to connect with everyone. And now let us begin our worship service with our call to worship. You can follow along in the worship bulletins that were sent ahead by email, or you can view your screen. We gather to worship our loving, nurturing God, who, like a mother, knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go, and comforts us in times of need. Praise God, the source and sustainer of life. Amen. Our praise song this morning, As for Me and My House, let's sing together. to you. 
this morning we have a special treat. Uh, we have our Sunday school children along with Miss BJ sharing their Mother's Day wishes. I think even maybe some Mother's Day breakfasts. So Miss BJ, will you let us know and show us what the Sunday school children have been up to with their Mother's Day celebrations? So for Mother's Day, we're going to be making our mom an egg omelet. Starting with Davy's going to start cracking the eggs in the bowl. Allie's scrambling the eggs. All right, now it's time to put the butter in the pan and fry it up. Take out the audio and have to and then just go back in. I'm going to take out the audio. Give it to Dad. <laughs> this pleases me. Much yellow. And now we are going to add some orange. Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. If we plant tomatoes, we would have fire and blueberries. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh it's, it's magic. magic. You yeah. know. Mm, look at that plate. The colors complement each other perfectly, like a sunset. Alright, we're gonna take out the saucing part, but we're just... Why are we gonna take out the saucing part? That's aesthetic. Look at these artful splats. We're gonna take out the sauce, just the saucing scene. One, two, three. Happy, Happy Mother's, Mother's Day! Day. I just had to run to the sound booth to see those uh, cute videos. Well, we thank all of you who have been offering of yourselves, and, and, even, and we especially thank our, our mothers, our women of faith who offer themselves to us, and they become God's gifts. So we also uh, have been receiving your donations and your contributions to your Montebello Congregational Church so we thank you. We have set them on our altar. And uh, we are also called to lift up and rather than to tear down and support one another rather than abandon. We reach out to others that may have been turned away themselves. So we give from our hearts and love that and love in all places and all times that we may be a witness to the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. So let us dedicate these donations and these offerings that have been given with faithful hearts. Let us pray. Generous God, we thank you for the many gifts you have poured into our lives, for those who love us and nurture us, for those who teach us to be loving people. Bless those people and bless these gifts that we may work for you, bringing healing and hope to a fractured world. This we pray. In Christ's name, amen. This morning for our prayer time, we have some prayers that have been sent in from the congregation. 
and we will share them with you now. And we invite you to affirm one another's prayers as I invite you saying, God, in your mercy, let us all respond, receive our prayer. Our first prayer request comes from Jay and Jan F. For the family of one of their classmates, they're praying for the family of John F., who passed away recently from a heart attack. So we keep the family of John F. in our prayers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. The Martinez family asks for prayers for the family of their landlord, Eddie O., who passed away April 27th. So let us keep the family of Eddie O. in our prayers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Lynn H. asks for prayers for her twin cousins, Rachel and Reese, who are EMTs on the island of Oahu, that's in Hawaii. So we pray for Rachel and Reese. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And of course, uh, I'm not withholding the last name of the next prayer. Uh, we've been following the prayers of the Ramos Young family. Uh, Karen Fay, uh, Reverend Karen Fay, Ramos Young, uh, says that last week, as you may remember, uh, Daryl, her husband, tested positive for COVID-19, uh, but is asymptomatic. And today, actually that was May 4th, uh, Earlier this week, uh, Reverend Karen Fay received COVID-19 results, and she also tested positive. Uh, but there are no symptoms at this time, so we are very thankful for that. For now, they will live separately, but together under the same roof until they both test negative. So she says, together. And they rejoice that their three children, who experienced the virus uh, in March and April, have recovered, and they are together. So together we continue to pray for those that are battling for their lives, struggling through the many ways this virus can afflict the body, and for the growing list of families grieving the loss of loved ones. And together we hold our hearts, in our hearts, those who are overwhelmed with anxiety and fear. You are not alone. So let us join the Ramos Young family in their prayers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Chico I asks for prayers for her niece Doris H., who will have surgery on May 14th for removal of two tumors in her left breast. Let us ask for God's healing hand to be upon Doris H. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Mari L. gives thanksgiving for son legend who turned one year old. And of course, we give even greater thanksgiving because we know that uh, he has an issue with a spina bifida and is preparing to uh, be fitted for braces uh, for, to start walking. So we give thanksgiving for legend who turns one year old. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uh, Sandra L. last week asked for prayers for her brother Stephen, who possibly showed signs or symptoms of, of the coronavirus. Uh, fortunately, when he was tested, it was negative. And uh, he was tested again because he was feeling some, uh, perhaps some respiratory symptoms. He is still testing negative. So Stephen does not have COVID-19. Uh, he is feeling better and returned to work this past week. So uh, Sandra thanks everyone for their heartfelt prayers and warm wishes. So we ask for continued healing for Sandra's brother Stephen F., God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. And uh, finally, uh, Natasha Y. in the Youth Bible Study Fellowship asks for prayers for all of us 
who will be taking advanced placement exams this week. Oh my, <laughs> that sounds pretty stressful. So uh, for uh, Natasha Y, for all students taking uh, AP tests this week, we hold them in our prayers. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Let us continue to be in prayer. Our loving and gracious God, for mothers everywhere shielding their children from danger, especially refugees and asylum seekers, many vulnerable and homeless on the borders of our countries, for mothers protecting their children made homeless after natural disasters and changing weather patterns, we give thanks for our own mothers, for the life that we have been given and the love that nurtured us to, into who we are today. We pray for all mothers who bear pain through their children's suffering, for the mothers with children in chronic or terminal illness, for mothers who suffer because of the child's violent action as terrorists or extremists. We pray for God's healing, wholeness, and peace in their lives as we hold the name and names those known to us before God, we pray and give thanks for our own local churches and faith communities, praying for a deeper spiritual life and vision to reach out with compassion and love. Lord, take our thoughts and turn them into prayer. And take our prayer and turn them into love and take our love and turn it into life in Jesus Christ today. For we ask all these prayers and lift them before you in the name of Jesus, praying as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This morning's scripture reading is taken from the second letter of the Apostle Paul to his, uh, his disciple, Timothy. So this is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 3 to 7. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did. When I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. May God add blessing to the reading and hearing of these holy words. Amen. Well, let's share a little bit of a message now. And it is Mother's Day. Uh, I know I'd been putting Easter stickers like Easter eggs and bunnies on the, on the blue box, or I should say the family time box. But being the festival of the Christian home and we're remembering our mothers, I thought I would share a nice flower like a red rose. So we'll put this sticker onto uh, the family time box. Join me with you.
Let us pray. God of love, you have called us together as family as we continue to reflect on what you have called us to pass on to others. Remind us to cherish our families and our friends as, as your gracious gifts to us as we hear and take in your word now. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Well, continuing in our Pass It On worship series, uh, in this morning's scripture reading from the Apostle Paul's second letter to his young protege, Timothy, we catch a glimpse into another aspect of young Timothy's faith development. As Paul thought, of, uh, thought fondly of Timothy and his sincere faith, he was reminded that such faith also dwelt first in Timothy's grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice. And we don't know when these women had come to faith in Christ, and even though they had Greek names, at least Eunice was a Jewish believer. Uh, perhaps Lois had been converted in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost and had come home very excited and started telling her daughter about what she had experienced and had been overcome by the Holy Spirit. Perhaps, uh, perhaps both women were devout Jews who responded to Paul's preaching when he visited uh, Lystra, their city. But the implication is that their faith preceded that of Timothy. So it is a faith that they had before Timothy had his own faith. And Timothy, of course, became a young and up-and-coming minister in the very early church, in the very early days of the church. Now, I was mentioning that some days, uh, some churches refer to Mother's Day as the festival of the Christian home. So it's the perfect time to reflect on the influence of all of the women of faith in our lives, even as Paul remembered the faith of Timothy's grandmother, Lois, and mother, Eunice. So, for the remainder of my reflection this morning, I, I actually shifted my focus um, when I heard of the passing of Richard Wayne Penniman, who passed away yesterday morning at the age of 87. You all know Penniman as legendary American singer, songwriter, and performer, rock and, roll, rock and Roll Hall of Famer, Little Richard. So let me share some excerpts from Little Richard's final message that was broadcast during uh, the worship hour at the 3ABN ABN camp meeting uh, about two and a half years ago. So these are some words from Little Richard. The Seventh-day Adventist church is the church that I came to. I was brought up in the Baptist church. I went to the Baptist church on Sunday. I went to, I went to the movie. I went to the Methodist church. I go to the movie. My grandmother was in the Methodist church. My mother was in the Baptist church. My sister, she came out. She met a preacher by the name of Elder Ward. He was a preaching in my hometown of Macon, Georgia. That's where I'm from. And the girls was going to the tent because Elder Ward was a good-looking guy. He was handsome. Yeah, but he got him in the truth. And my sister became an Adventist, which we didn't know anything about. I heard my grandmother talk about it. Her name was Miss Alma. But my sister came home that day, and my dad saw my dad. Uh, he was so mad. She threw the pork chops out in the backyard. She threw out the hot dogs in the backyard. She threw out the sausages in the backyard. And my daddy said, 
Who threw out all this good, who, that good meat in the yard like that? My sister said, we said, Peggy did it. My daddy said, I'm going to kill you, girl. And he said, you know how much we paid for that? He said, you're going to, you're going to eat that. Go out and get it. Because she had read that God didn't want us to eat that kind of food and that he had clean meats for us and that the Bible tells us what is clean and what is not clean. She wanted, uh, but she wanted to get the family to go the right way, so she threw it all out to make sure that we wouldn't eat it anymore. And that, at that time, I was mad with her because I, too, wanted my pork chops. I love pork chops. That was my favorite meat. Pork chops and ham. My Lord, my God. I would eat that thing all day. But Elder Ward said, God got something good for you. And when I read with him, and when I got with him, his sermon every week would be about little Richard. I was wearing my, my hair uh, real long and, and, and then, then the makeup on my face and the, the eyebrow pencil and all that stuff. And you, could tell, uh, you couldn't tell me nothing. The makeup made me look lighter and brighter, but it couldn't fix, it couldn't fix up. But God showed me something. God showed me that, Richard, if you live for me, I'm going to give you eternal life. Richard then shared more about his faith and as well as sharing about his mother, Leva Mae Stewart, and his grandmother, Miss Alma. Little Richard continues, God going to give you a mansion that he built for you, and for you, and for you, and for you. It don't matter. Ain't no racism in heaven. None. You know, I just think, thinking about the boys, how they used to make fun of my mother, because, you know, my mother, she's real fair. She's Indian. She's Mohican Indian, and she's real light, like, uh, like, like you. And that's what my mama looked. The guys used to talk about my mama, but I loved her. You know, that was my mama. But I found out something, that if you live for Jesus, you love everybody. I've learned that love covers everything. It covers it all, brothers and sisters. And I don't care where you've been or what you've done. I don't care if you're a drunk. I don't care if you're a thief. Give your life to Jesus, and he will change your life. He changed my life. I was full of hate and animosity. My best friend killed my daddy. My daddy died at not 39 years old with 12 children. And I learned that hatred that I, that I thought I had. I, I didn't think I have it. I was a real hater. My mama had 12 children. And it was hard to feed 12 children back in the day. My daddy was a bootlegger. He sold whiskey to feed us. My mama never worked. She couldn't work. She out there raising them children. Now I'm going to tell you something. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's in Hebrews 11.1. 1. We need to have faith in God. We need to believe there is a God and that he is a rewarder of them that seek him diligently.
I enjoyed hearing little Richard preaching and sharing his testimony, that his final testimony in that broadcast as he, as he reflected on the women of faith in his life, his sister Peggy, his mother Leva May, his grandmother Miss Alma, even as the Apostle Paul gave thanks for the faithful women in Timothy's life, Timothy's grandmother Lois and mother Eunice. So let us all thank God for the faithful women in our lives. So I want you to think about the women of faith in your faith family as I close with a song I just discovered yesterday, actually. It's a song that was recorded by little Richard in 1952, even before his Tutti Frutti fame. So on this Mother's Day, I invite you to think about the mothers in your life, as did little Richard in his 1952 blues recording, a rock and roll blues recording of Thinking About My Mother. I'm not, uh, my apologies ahead of time. I'm, of course, not going to be singing it as beautifully as little Richard, but I'm going to give it a shot. about my mother All I do is sit and cry When I think about my mother All I do is sit and cry I swear I'm gonna love her Yes, until the day I die She clothed me and she fed me When I couldn't even feed myself Yeah, she clothed me and she fed me when I couldn't even feed myself The way I love my mother I never love nobody else The day I left home She fell down on her knees and prayed the day I left home she fell down on her knees and prayed she said Lord bless my child please help him on his As we have prayed for our mothers, our faith mothers, I hope that you had a chance to give thanks to God for what they've been in your life. To God be the glory. Let us join now in our closing song. And let that also be a prayer offering to God this morning as we sing together. Oh, and by the way, before we sing this song, uh, how can we say, or how can I say thanks? I want to remind you, uh, stick around for the benediction because we're going to replay some of those 
uh, benedictions uh, of love one another from our Sunday school children, including a couple more new ones. So you'll want to stay for that special Mother's Day video benediction at the end. Let's sing together. How can I say thanks? Tagai ni aishi ai nasai. 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 Tagai ni aishi 
Hermione, I say mas. Hello, family. Aloha, ke kahi i ke kahi. Hi, everybody. Don't forget to love each other. Los unos a los otros. Amen. Amen. Amense unos a los otros. And may the force be with you. Amémonos los unos a los otros. John 13, 34.